channel, a place where I combine both my passion for music and for running. Do you sometimes feel like you look like Phoebe from Friends when you run and you don't know how to fix it? Well, this is the video for you. In this video, I'm going to share my top three tips that will help you not only improve your form, but run more efficiently and with fewer injuries. So let's get to it. running form. Every person has a different body which affects how they move or run. You'll even see some professional runners doing some funny things with their body and yet still able to perform at the top of their field. However, there are still some basic guidelines for running form that I want to share with you in this video that will help you waste less energy and have fewer injuries. I have is to focus on our head and shoulders. When your head and shoulders are lined up over your hips and your feet, you can move forward as a unit and waste less energy. You want to keep your chin level, not too low or too high, and your gaze fixed at least 20 meters ahead of you. This way you can allow more oxygen in and not run into anything in front of you. I know sometimes I catch myself looking straight down when I run, and that's something I need to work on. Because we sit so much at desks or on the couch or anywhere, our shoulders can become rounded. The rounded shoulders then often translates into our running form. You want to keep your shoulders aligned under your ears and not hunched up. If you find your shoulders slowly rising up when you run, I want you to think about squeezing your shoulder blades together but not pushing them down either. Pushing your shoulders down is also not good for your body. On my run, if I feel like my shoulders are tensing, I like to swing my arms and kind of just move them around, which reminds me just to stay relaxed. I want you to pretend that there's a string pulling you up towards the sky that will help keep you aligned and open. By thinking about staying open, it helps you breathe better and not hunch over. is focusing on our hands and arms. When you run, you want to keep your elbows close to your side but not pressed in either. As we usually run forwards, we want our arms to go forwards too. To help with this, imagine a straight line going down your body and your arms shouldn't cross over it. If I want to run faster or I'm feeling tired, I like to pump my arms as that helps me move in a more streamlined kind of way if that makes sense and counteracts the feeling of tiredness. In regards to arm placement, something that I hadn't really thought about before is how your heart has to pump blood to our extremities when we run. And when we do an activity like running, for example, our body requires even more blood. If our arms are too high, our heart has to work against gravity and push the blood uphill. The same thing goes if our arms are too low, our heart has to pump the blood farther away. Then it makes the most logical sense that our arms should be close to our heart at a 90 degree angle. How we hold our hands when we run, like I'm doing the jazz fingers, jazz hands, is important too. You want your thumbs on top and facing the sky. Pretend that you're lightly holding a potato chip, yum, in between your thumb and your index finger and you don't want to crush it. This prevents you from squeezing and holding tension. I find if I squeeze my hands, it causes me to tense up my shoulders and my arms and just waste energy. Precious energy that I want used towards running faster or running longer. Tip number three is your lower body. Our lower body is obviously very important as it's actually the thing that propels us forwards. If you find when you run that your knees knock together or your calves or feet as well, it could mean a few things. One thing that it could be is having a weaker glute. I used to find the inside of my shoes all torn up because my feet used to hit together. As soon as I started focusing on my glutes, especially my gluteus medius, I found that my feet stopped hitting together and I didn't get that rub mark anymore. Which is great because it stopped destroying my beautiful and expensive running shoes. When you watch professional and elite runners, you'll notice how smoothly they run. They make it look effortless and they're very efficient in how they move. And we should aspire to be like that when we run as well. At first, I didn't understand why at first, I didn't understand why people kept talking about your running cadence and why it was so important. Cadence refers to the number of time your feet hit the ground in a minute. There's a lot of discussion about the perfect running cadence and 180 is a number that frequently comes up. However, this number can change depending on how fast you are running or the runner itself. Some taller runners have a slower cadence. As well, you can see a difference in the running cadence between a sprinter and a long distance runner. To put this in context, I wanted to look at a couple of my recent runs to see what my cadence was. The first run we are going to look at is an easy run. My cadence radius is from 186 to 210. 
The next run was a speed workout. You can see that my cadence didn't really vary much between the two runs, only in when I got faster, my cadence got faster. I know on my Garmin watch, there's an option to show your running cadence when you run. There is a danger to changing your stride too much. If you have too long of a stride, it causes you to waste energy and lose your momentum. This is called overstriding. The opposite of this, with too short of a stride, is called understriding. One super helpful advice that I got a few years ago is to try to land as quietly as you can. This helps really activate your glutes when you run. And glutes are very important when we run, especially when we want to run faster or longer distances. Everyone has their own unique foot strike or how they land on their feet when they run. There's a lot of talk about how if you heel strike or land on your heel, you're actually kind of pressing the brake and putting a lot of strain on your body. Some say that the best place to land is the mid strike or the midsole of your foot between the balls and the heel of your foot. Though I have seen some professional athletes land more on their heel. All I'm really gonna say about feet in this video is that you should land under your center of mass with a slight forward tilt which helps moves you forward. When I think about landing quietly, this also ties into the heel lift. The heel lift is important as it engages your hamstrings in the mid-swing phase of your running and reduces the load put on your hip flexors. If you tend to scuff your feet or have a low heel lift, it could mean that you have your hips in the wrong position, which leads me to hips. Often you can see beginner runners with their hips back and low in the position some call sitting in the saddle. This often, not always though, goes hand in hand with people who heel strike. When you sit in the saddle or have flexed hips, it often creates tight hip flexors which inhibit our ability to activate our glutes. A cue to avoid this is again thinking about running tall and pushing your hips slightly forward and engaging your core. When you push your hips forward, it also helps with your knee lift and creating efficient movements of your legs. One of the most common reasons for poor running form is fatigue. Sometimes how we run though is determined by our body and we can't really change that. When we get tired on our run, it's so easy to forget about our form as all we can think about is how much we want to stop. To counteract getting tired too quickly on your run, you can focus on strengthening your core and just overall body strength. I have a few exercises that will help you in my strength training video for runners and I'll have the link in the description below. One thing that's helped me when I get tired on my run is to focus on one aspect of my form. Whether it's cues like land quietly, stay open, run smoothly, run tall, lift your heels, it really distracts me and helps me focus on the important thing like my running form. I also sometimes think about my A, B or C drills and if you don't know what those are, please check out my video on how to run faster where I go into more detail about them. Another really helpful thing to do is have someone video you while you run or use a GoPro like I did here. This way you can see how you actually move and notice things that you might not have realized you were doing. In my case, I had no idea my right hand stayed open like this until I saw these videos. Now that I'm aware of this, I'll be more conscious of it when I run. Well, I know there's some biomechanical things that we can't change and that's okay, but I wanted to give you some basic guidelines to focus on so you can improve your running form and become a stronger, more efficient, and less injury prone runner. If you like this video, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up. Also, if you don't want to miss out on my weekly videos, please hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a video. Happy running and I'll see you next time.